Hi, I'm Eric with Stepcraft, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about our spindle called the HF500. And that's this unit right here. The HF500 is a 500 watt brushless DC powered uh, computer controlled spindle. So it sounds like a mouthful, but essentially what that means is that rather than an AC motor like you would have in say a DeWalt DW611 or a Crest spindle or some other common spindles that are on the market, this uses a brushless DC motor. DC motors have a very high torque at a lower RPM and you have a lot more control over the speed adjustment on that. The HF500 actually comes, there's a few components when you buy this system. You get the actual spindle itself, which goes in the tool holder on the machine. You get a control box and you get a air pump system. So I want to talk to you about each of these components and how you connect them and explain to you a little bit more about what you can expect when you choose an HF500 for your system. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the control box for the HF500. When you receive the spindle, what you're going to do is you have to go to the back of the control box and you've got two wires that you need to plug in. One of them, it directly connects to the spindle itself and the other one is a serial cable that connects from the control box to the serial port on the back of the Stepcraft machine. Now there's only one port on the back of the Stepcraft that matches this cable, so you don't have to worry about plugging it into the wrong one. Okay, it only, it's only gonna go into one particular spot. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna plug the wire for the spindle into the control box. It is keyed, so it's only gonna go in here one way and you can spin this around until it pushes in and then you screw the uh, outside collar nut on until it's tight and you don't have to worry about that coming off. The same thing holds true with the serial cable. So this is gonna plug into the back of the supply and then tighten the two nuts on either side of the power cable and you are good to go. That's all that's needed to connect electrically the HF500 spindle. Now, there's one other connection we have to talk about and then I'll get into the operation of this spindle and that's the air pump. So one of the unique things that uh, comes with the uh, HF500 spindle and we get asked a lot of questions about this is wh what is this? And in, in this case, this is a newer air compressor pump that actually comes with the newer HF500s prior to that we included what looked like a uh, fish pump, a fish tank pump, which did the same, same basic job. The newer HF500s are coming with this new style uh, compressor and it's got kind of beige color and it's got the motor and uh, everything on the backside and it comes with a long piece of clear hose. So what you do, it doesn't really matter where you mount the air pump. A lot of people put it on the floor out of the way and there's enough hose here that you could do that safely and not have to worry about it. Now on the side of the HF500 is this little blue port. Okay, this is the air inlet port. And it's really, really simple to connect. All you do is take the end of the hose and simply push it into that blue port and you're done. It automatically locks in so you don't have to worry about it coming out. And if you need to take it out, you could just push down on the blue ring and the hose pops right out, okay? So it's kind of uh, friction fit in there. So you just push it in and you're ready to go. Now, what some people do is they'll use tie straps or something to take these wires, the wire and the hose, and just kind of tie them together so they don't get in the way of the machine when it's running. So you might ask why we have an air pump included with the HF spindle. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're taking a steady flow of air, then we're pumping it into the lower part of the spindle. And what happens is the air is, is pumping through the casing and out through the bearing uh, ports here. So it's keeping debris from caking up inside the bearing and it's also keeping the lower part, which is the heat sink of the motor, it's keeping it cool, okay? It doesn't require a lot of air but just a constant airflow from this small pump is all it needs. And that's gonna ensure successful operation of your HF500. So it's very, very important that you make sure that you've got the air pump connected and that it's running when you start the machine. 
Now, the to run the pump, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just plug it in and it's automatically on. So a lot of times we will connect the air pump, the power supply for the HF spindle and the machine to a power strip. And then you can simply turn the power strip on and everything powers up at the same time. Now, the HF500 itself has a uses an ER11 collet system. So what there is, is there's a, a nut on the bottom and the collet inside is interchangeable, okay? So there's a button on the side of the spindle that you can push down and you push it, what I do is I push it down and I turn the spindle until you feel the button bottom out. And what that's gonna do is lock the shaft on the uh, spindle so that you can take a wrench and loosen up the collet nut, okay? So all you do is you give it, you loosen it up a little and the bit simply comes right out. Then you can simply just put the bit back in, tighten it up, finger tight, and then give it a, a good you know, quarter turn and it's, it's tight. Now, if you want to change the collet, okay, so we'll do the same thing. We'll turn it till it bottoms out. We'll loosen this. We'll take the bit out and the collet is actually going to come out with the nut. Okay, so this is this is the collet here. This is an ER11. It's an eighth inch uh, shaft collet. We have collets available for eighth inch, three sixteenths, quarter inch, and then you can go to any supplier and pick up metric sizes as well. We usually will stock a six millimeter as well, but the uh, in the U.S. and Canada and even Mexico, they tend to use the uh, the imperial size size. Uh, collets. Okay, so all you're going to do is you're going to take the collet, you're going to push it into the nut, and you're going to take the HF spindle and lock the shaft again and simply screw the nut down until it bottoms out. And what's important here is you want to make sure that the nut is flush with the collet. Okay, you don't want the collet to be recessed in there. It should be flush with the end of the nut. Okay, and that's if it's if it's not and what's going to happen is as you tighten the nut the collet is not seated properly and you run the risk of bending the collet and having the tool actually not be centered and it could potentially vibrate so very important to make sure that the bottom of the collet is even with the bottom of the nut all right and when you're done with that we're going to put this bit back in here just for our examples Okay, we're gonna put the spindle back in and I'm gonna tighten down the tool holder. This is our quick release uh, lever that's available. It's $9.99, you can add it on to any machine. It allows you to remove the attachments on the machine without having to use an Allen wrench because the, the machine comes stock with an Allen head bolt that goes on there. So the last thing I wanna talk about here is uh, the control unit itself. Now, you'll notice on the front of the control box that there's a switch an LED display, and a dial, okay? So everybody's always asks, and there's also a push button. And everybody asks what, what these are for. It's very, very simple. If your intention is to let the software control the RPM of the machine, of the spindle, and when you start the job, uh, the spindle's gonna power up, and it's gonna go to the preset RPM. It's gonna do it all automatically. If that's the case, all you need to do is simply turn the switch on, and leave it alone. You don't need to do anything else. If for some reason you want to manually adjust the RPM and manually start the spindle, maybe, uh, maybe you're gonna put a piece of material in here, you're gonna, you wanna start the spindle and you wanna use the arrow keys to lower the, the uh, tool into the material and say cut straight back. Uh, you, you, know, you wanna do it manually using the arrow keys instead of using uh, vector cut 2D or or whatever uh, cam program you're using, you can do that. Uh, and what you would do is you would power on the spindle, um, which basically we're just turning. That two tones you hear is important. That's the speed control circuitry inside the control box initializing. So if you turn this power supply on and you don't hear that, something's probably wrong. So you should always hear that two tone. I'll do it again so you can hear it again. So we'll do it again, we'll turn it on. That's the tone you should hear. When you hear that, 
That means the speed control circuit is initialized and it's initialized into the machine itself and you're good to go. So when you start the job and you see CNC, the spindle's gonna power up to the RPM you set and you're gonna start running your job. If you wanna do this manually, you can simply hit the button on the front and then you can increase the dial and you'll see that the spindle powers up from there. And by adjusting this, you can adjust the, uh, the RPM. And then you can simply hit the button and it shuts it off. Now, you'll notice on the LCD display here, it, it goes from zero to 99. So that's a percentage, okay? That's important to understand. It's not the actual RPM. It doesn't have anything to do with the number of RPMs that you're spinning. It's simply the percentage of, RP, of power that you're putting into it, okay? so. If you have this at 50, you're running at 50% of the max power. If it's on 99, then that's technically 100% of max power on the uh, spindle. And you'll notice that the LCD display will change based on the RPM setting that you have in the software. So for instance, if you set it to 12,000 RPM for that particular bit, when this starts up, you'll notice that the uh, display is gonna, dis it'll display a number. You can reference that later if you ever do any manual cutting, so you'll know okay, 12,000 RPM is the same as 66% on here. So you can just write that down. So if you ever wanted to run something manually at 12%, you can just, um, at, I'm sorry, at 12,000 RPM, you could simply turn this dial up to 66 and you know that that's the RPM. But again, this is a CNC machine. So the need for running this manually is minimal. Uh, I don't have too many applications really here in the shop that we've ever used where we needed to have it manual. So it's just important to know that because the buttons are on here doesn't mean you need to use them and probably never will in a normal situation. Uh, so you can just rely on UCCNC to, uh, to interpret the G-code from your CAM program, whether it be Vectric, MasterCAM, uh, Fusion 360, whatever you're using, and it's going to interpret that G-code and it's going to create uh, an on-off signal as well as an RPM for the spindle to run on. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's the HF500 spindle in a nutshell. Um, it's a very simple device to use, very powerful, extremely accurate. Uh, but we do get a lot of questions uh, regarding the air pump, regarding the uh, control box, the, the wiring for the control box, how do you put the collet in, and where do you plug the hose into it, and certainly what are the buttons for. So I'm hoping in this video I've explained that to you. If you have any further uh, questions, please don't hesitate to give our office a call. It's 203-556-1856, and you can select either sales or support, and somebody there would be happy to talk to you.